to know about the music. No, duh! Just chill out, Raph. See, okay, Raph and I were waiting for this pizza to be delivered, see, and... Yeah, you know, and I was just banging on some sewer pipes when all of a sudden we realized we were making music. Oh, man, it was so bodacious! Yo, rock and roll, dudes! Totally break a shell, man! All right, all right, let's get this. Awesome, I'm ready to go. Yeah, happening. Dudes, we're rocking. Yeah. Dude, get off my shell. Watching them come out of their shells literally now as they go out on the road, it's great. I mean, it's uh, it's incredibly fun for myself and and my partner Godfrey just to be around it and watch it, because these guys are like, they are truly a band in the best sense of the word. Because they're you know brothers and been together forever, and the music really reflects that. And now that they're taking it out, it's tremendous. Bob was telling me all about this incredible group that was playing on the ground in the sewers in New York, and it was the most exciting thing he said he's ever seen. And of course, we managed some of the biggest rock and roll bands in the world, Aerosmith, ACDC, Ted Nugent, the Scorpions. We, we knew that something new and exciting had to happen in the 90s. Bob told me about this group 
the Ninja Turtles, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I mean, I couldn't believe that they were going to sing. And Bob brought me down. What I saw was incredible. It was the most unbelievable, best new rock and roll band I had ever seen. I just had to sign them. Because this is the first album, they were so into it, and they were fascinated by everything. They're a little green, you know, they didn't really know exactly all the ropes and, and what's involved in, in recording, but generally they, they picked up real quick, they got out there, they had a great atmosphere in the studio all the time. Bob respects the Turtles a great deal, and he really wanted so much to let this be their record. And I think he, he really pulled it off by just giving them room to be themselves, and I think it really worked well. Michelangelo writes lyric and Raphael writes music. These guys have gotten into this kind of routine of writing every day, even before we got involved with them. They come from such an athletic discipline background, being ninjas, and having such a tremendous mentor and splinter. Their ability to translate that discipline, almost like an athletic kind of quality and approach to living, to the music was a breeze. As you know, they only have three fingers. So building their instruments, it was difficult. Uh, Donatello built guitars with only three strings. So um, he can do some amazing stuff on them. And of course, they're all on MIDI pickups in their set. But uh, Leonardo plays a one-string bass, which is great. It's amazing sounds out of it. It's fretless, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then uh, the keyboards that, that Donatello plays all have uh, triple thickness keys. So uh, at least he doesn't have to hit like three or four notes at the same time. Raphael plays a split between kind of a stand-up kind of timbali set and the synth pads that trigger drum sounds. And then he also plays saxophone. When we were trying to choose the single, we wanted to make sure that the statement they made was, you know, clean and, and clear, that these guys are for real. They're a band. They're ready to play. Come out of their shells. So when we pick Count on Us, I think that song really is the, the sum total of everything they are, that they fight for what's right, that they fight to be free, and the idea that the song is a hard anthem rocker. I mean, it really rocks. When MCA got behind the record and heard the music, and as we were doing the tracks and laying them down, and they came to the studio, and I think what they really saw was the music coming through, and that they were for real, and they believe in them as a band, not just as a commodity to be exploited. And I think for the, from the Turtles' point of view, that's what they were looking for in a label, was somebody that really believed in the music. And then from MCA's point of view, it was something that they could really believe in and take to the street and promote in a way that made sense. Totally blew me away. Madonna will go into therapy when she sees this video. It's going to drive her crazy. You know, you don't know what to expect on any group in any video. I hate to use the word cowabunga, but it's as if they went out of the, their shells, out of the sewers, right into the camera. The energy, the feeling, it, it was unbelievable. I think this group and this album's going to be around for a long time, and I wouldn't be surprised if they won a Grammy Award or American Music Awards. It's not going to surprise me at all. My sons, you have learned the ways of the ninja, and you have filled me with great pride for each of you. You must all keep growing, seeking and finding yourselves. I hear you sing, and this is good. Music can let you accomplish more than all of the weapons in the world. You can touch people. You can make a difference. And the difference is good. Practice well. Practice with the same focus that turned you into skilled ninjas. And take your music to all who will listen. I think
think Splinter wasn't really into the music thing, and we sure thought he wasn't gonna be into it at all. Whoa, and if you could have heard us at first, man, we were bad. Like, thank you, dude, next. But the fact was, he like totally got behind it. In fact, I think he digs that we're playing music more than he digs us doing the ninja thing. Yeah, like, you know, he tells us all the time, you can accomplish more with music than you can with any pair of nunchucks. Totally, dude. Yeah, bodacious! Radical! Happening! Hanging hollow, homeboy! Oh, yeah! Once we started in the studio and started to work on the record, I began to see I had musical abilities that my other brothers didn't have. I enjoy putting music together, like being a producer, you know? I produce things, that's what I do. Like, whoa, dudes, we never whoa. knew how much work there was in putting on a live yeah. show. Like, directors and sponsors and lighting yeah. and costumes. Whoa, cowabunga, dude. So once the show was a go, dudes? Me and my brothers, you know, we got involved in everything. Enter Donatello. This is my territory. Call me Gearhead Supreme. I don't exactly know where it comes from, but I'm just good at building things. I guess I just love working with my hands. All right, see you around. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, cool. This is great. Are you sure this is going to work? Sure, they're going to work. We'll put you right through the ceiling. Oh, outrageous! <laughs> I think we really have got something here. In the words of my brother Mike, it's totally, totally radical! radical. Here to tell you about how this tour came about are the gentlemen that introduced the Turtles to Radio City, old friends Steve Lieber and Bob Bijan, Steve and Bob. We've been practicing for a year because they didn't want to play out until they were really ready to play. And we had to make all new instruments. Michelangelo has to play three fingers tuned to an open E because it's hard to do anything but bar chords when you only have three fingers. But uh, we're ready to come out of our shells, and we're excited about opening here and starting the North American tour at Radio City. And like any major rock and roll tour that takes place now, you know, a lot of times you need to affiliate with a sponsor, and certainly we talked to the Turtles about working with a sponsor for the tour, but they wouldn't compromise, they wouldn't sell out. And uh, once we landed on Pizza Hut Pizza, we went to see them, because we thought it would be a natural fit. And there was one guy at Pizza Hut who really saw the vision and the potential of this band. Uh, he heard their first demos and knew that they could rock any house that they went to. And that man is David Novak, and we'd like to bring him on stage now. Senior, David, no. Senior Vice President of Marketing, Pizza Hut. We're just absolutely thrilled to get the world's most famous pizza eaters to hook up with the number one pizza company in the world. Pizza Hut will launch the most aggressive promotion ever done in the record industry to support the Turtles' new music, which I'm sure uh, all of America will love. Will Raphael and Donatello have asked us to wait a couple of weeks to provide all the details, and uh, we know you'll love the music, and we know America will love the music. Thank you very much. Going up in a glass bowl with 
Chameleons, lizards, and tadpoles It hardly enters your mind That there's something better than this A better sleep in a carrot Maybe a scene from the parrot Believe me when I tell you The word gourmet just don't exist But peace and power A flying saucer food delight Peace and power Oh, that's what makes us feel all right When uh, I first met them, they were lying back, eating pizza, relaxing, uh, talking about uh, the toys that were going to come out, and uh, uh, we were having a good time, and uh, they approached me with this uh, musical idea, and um, they said that uh, rock and roll was the way to go, and uh, I said, listen, if you guys really want to do it, I think we should do it, and uh, uh, the first songs that they uh, presented to me I thought were just hot, and uh, we went for it. What do you love? It's hard to say no to a turtle, you know? To rock the crowd, so he put down his weapon, he picked up an instrument. Different kind of message is what he implements. Then he say, you got to keep pushing the envelope. Because if you don't, you'll wind up a dope. Because when the going gets rough, the going gets tough. The winners are the ones who say it's never enough. Now, are you listening to what I say? I am still a mutant turtle in every way. But tonight... Anything. Give him anything, give him anything that you plug in. If it's got to do with a chip or a bit, energy okay, that it. just won't quit. Now, once they took the concept of channeling that energy through themselves that they used to fight and they channeled it into their performing, um, I, people are going to be amazed. They're going to be just astounded what they see when they come and see these guys perform. Once I listened to the Turtles' music and heard the messages that they're bringing across and the decision to use their celebrity status to try to reach kids and try to keep them from messing up their lives, it really meant something to me. I'm the one they call Michelangelo. Let me kick my story, just say so. Born like a pet, just like the rest of them. I grew up wild, party with the best of them. Living loose, living large. With my human now, I'm in charge. It's not that I'm grass, not that I'm rude. It's just that I'm a naturally humorous dude. Music is the way to reach people, to make a difference and do good for the world. People didn't even know we were real. Now they can see us and hear us. It's extremely hip. We've paid our dues. Now we're out of our shells and we're rocking. <laughs>
your neck. You got it wide, you're in control. You can ride the ball, you're a tubing mode. Nothing cranks like being underground, especially the groove is sound. You fall to your own out of sight. That's the point of the game, man. Yo, man, you're tubing. This show's really interesting because it, it's, it's different from every other rock and roll show that uh, you've ever seen. The Turtles were trying to develop a story within their show as well as make the show technically interesting from an audience point of view. So they wanted to work with uh, Verilites and other computer-controlled gizmos to make the set interesting. Donatello had some very unusual ideas about what musical instruments are and how they're constructed. They're very complicated devices and they have, uh, so far as I can see, more computers in them than NASA have. It's amazing. Their idea was a, was a show with a, with a rock and roll musical base that, that people are familiar with, that, but tells their story and brings their message out to the, to, to the world in an unusual way. So they were almost taking Broadway elements and in, in, incorporating them in their show. It's like taking out the security guards on Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. But it's for everybody. I mean, they do rap. They do rock and roll. They do, you know, an easy listening to a surfing ballad. I mean, they are for everyone.
are definitely happening musically. <laughs>